Earlier this year, Yasser Qadi flagged one of David Wood's videos for a copyright violation. David appealed it and won. On October 7th, I was flagged by Yasser Qadi as well. The video that was flagged was my short edit of several clips of the now famous incident where Qadi flopped around like a dying fish that had been brutally dragged ashore by Muhammad Hijab. At first, I was naturally inclined not to care. The video had gone way beyond my channel to David's and others, and its content had been seen in one form or another by hundreds of thousands of people, at least, job done. And copyright appeals take time that I don't have. However, I noticed a trend. Several other people said the same thing happened to them. So Yasser Qadi's mission on social media is to remove all traces of his disastrous interview, even if it requires dishonesty, such as false copyright flags. So, Yasser Qadi, let's take a copyright quiz. In order to make a valid copyright complaint, what is at least one thing that you must have? A. A registered federal copyright. B. A registered federal copyright. C. A registered federal copyright. D. A registered federal copyright. Now, I'm sure that every single viewer knows the answer to this question, except for Yasser Qadi. But in order to make a valid copyright complaint, you need a registered federal copyright. Now, for question number two. This one's also for Yasser Qadi. At the time of filing your copyright complaints, did you have a registered federal copyright for the video I used where you flopped around like a dying fish? A. No. B. No. C. No. Or D. No. That's right. The answer is no. And the final question is for everyone. Did Yasser Qadi knowingly file false copyright complaints without a registered federal copyright and continue to file them even when he knew from experience that they could be successfully appealed? There's only one possible answer. Yes. So what's left for Yasser Qadi? He's been lying about the preservation of the Quran for decades. And when those lies are no longer possible to spread, he doesn't admit this to his Muslim audience. Instead, he tries to quietly distance himself from his former claims. When directly questioned about the subject in a live stream with Muhammad Ajab, the usually articulate Yasser Qadi flounders for over 20 minutes in one of the most awkward attempts of evasion I've ever seen. And now he's being dishonest again as he tries to false flag videos when he knows he doesn't have a copyright, and they wouldn't be copyright violations even if he did. For the rest of you he has false flagged, I encourage you to appeal. In my case, I retained a copyright attorney. I wanted to learn more about the process and how it works both at the federal level and on the YouTube side, and I wanted to use that knowledge to help out other channels who have been false flagged as well. For those channels that are US-based, Send me an email. I'll put you in touch with an experienced copyright attorney who is now quite familiar with the YouTube appeal process. And for everyone who has been false flagged, I encourage you to appeal it through YouTube. Let's fight this fraud. Now, as for the video in question, it has been restored on my channel. I've even updated the title, but there's still one problem. The video only has about 44,000 views. So be sure to watch the video and share it all around, even if you've seen it. Because at this point, fighting against Cotty's dishonesty is a matter of principle, something he has evidently abandoned. Every single student of knowledge knows, who studies Ulum al-Quran, that the most difficult topics are Ahruf and Qiraat, and the concept of Ahruf and the reality of Ahruf, and the relationship of the Rathmatic Mus'haf with the Ahruf and the preservation of the Ahruf. Is it one? Is it three? Is it seven? And the relationship of the Qira'at to the Ahruf. This is a topic that when you're the beginning, beginning student of knowledge, you're like, what is all of this going on here? When you go a little bit more, you learn to simply memorize what your teachers say and regurgitate it out. And you don't fully comprehend. When you do a deep dive is when things get very, very awkward and difficult. And this isn't new. This is from the time of the Sahaba. This is not a joke, brothers and sisters. The issue of Ahruf and Qiraat caused confusion to somebody whom the Prophet said, if you want to listen to the Quran directly, listen to Ubay. Ubay is not some even average Sahabi. He is the Qari of the Quran. 
He is the master. He is who he is. And he goes, فَدَخَلْ فِي نَفْسِي شَكْ like, What is all of this stuff? Um, again, this is the, you, you have asked me a very honest question. This is the first time I'm saying these things. Many people are aware who listen to my lectures that I've mentioned the crises that happened to me at Yale. This was the issue. That the issue of ahruf and preservation and qira'at and relationships between them, these are very, very difficult issues. And the most advanced of our scholars they're not quite fully certain how to solve all of the unanswered yeah. questions in there. Here's the point. These issues should only be discussed amongst people yeah. who know what the qira'at right. are and who understand yeah. some of these questions that are being so, raised. So is what you're saying, the shek that came, or not the shek, but the, the crisis that you had was in relation to this question of the relationship between the and the qira'at, basically? No, no, no. The crisis I had wasn't that. The crisis I had was, well, yeah, I mean, that, that, that was what generated. But what was the crisis? The crisis was very simple. Traditional understandings of ahruf and qira'at cannot answer some of these pressing questions that are now being poked by our uh, people outside of, by our academics, not our, by their academics outside of the faith tradition. You see, in a Muslim environment, there's always some respect that we have for the Quran. We should. In a Muslim environment, we'll press a little bit and then we'll say, okay, khalas, sami'na wa ta'na. And that's great, alhamdulillah. When you go to academia, they don't have that red line. And they're going to just, you know, the, 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 the famous story of the emperor with no clothes. They're going to just point out, no, that doesn't make any sense. Well, that's not true. And this and that. And they'll bring issues, which I'm not going to mention explicitly, that you know are true because they're in your own books. They're not inventing anything new. They'll bring you riwayat and they'll bring you athar. And then you add to that very well-known issues of, I don't even want to be explicit. And then you bring on top of that makhtutat. And then and then. And it's very clear to you and to every single very advanced student and specialist that the standard narrative has holes in it. That's what I'm going to say. The standard narrative does not answer some very pressing questions. These are now well known within the Western uh, Academy uh, that they're bringing forth issues. Their level of now knowledge is leaps and bounds above what it used to be, you know, 100 years ago. What is happening in the last few years is not me anymore. It's the Western academics. These, these problems are now becoming mainstream. And by and large, our ulama in the Eastern world are not aware, by and large, of what's going on in the Western side of things. And they're not answering those questions in a manner that it needs to be answered. If I were to give you a blank mushaf, yeah, and, uh, and tell you to write what is munazzal verbatim from Allah into that mushaf with no human interference, would you write something which corresponds? It's not an easy yes or no. It is enough for the Muslim to believe that the I think Quran this should be an easy yes or no, though. Yes, al Khadi. I... <laughs> <laughs> Very well. So, yeah, Muhammad, after we get off this phone call, me and you, let's have a number of discussions. No problem. I'm very yes. open with advanced students. But these issues should not... Look, it is Kalamullah, what is going to be written. It is Kalamullah. What, it is what, 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 what would you write? Uh, 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 let's not... Write? Let, let's, you, you're pushing me. <laughs> and I'm saying... It's not hikmah to, listen, I have a condition, like I said, everything I say is going to be factual. If I wanted to do okay. tawdiyah and whatnot, I would do it right now in front of you. There is no need for tawdiyah. The Quran is the uncreated speech of Allah. The Quran <laughs> is preserved. The Quran is known. The Quran is mutawatir. And alhamdulillah, all of the qiraat are the Quran. All of the qiraat are authentic. Alhamdulillah. Leave it at that, Akhi. Beyond this, honestly, I have no problem. We'll have a discussion or take my class. But beyond this requires background information. It is enough for the Muslim to know that the Quran is the speech of Allah that has been protected and what we recite is the kalam of Allah. That is enough for the Muslim to know. I, I... <laughs>